Our next presenter, Alejandro, who's going to speak about cheapness and democracy. Cheapness. <laughs> cheapness. We'll let Alejandro explain. <laughs> Uh, knowing that I was uh, going after Richard, I decided not to talk uh, too much about uh, sustainable cities because I cannot uh, compete. So I tried to find a kind of deviant uh, argument, which is this uh, cheapness and, and democracy, which in a way is a, <clears throat> is a discussion or, or a series of questions about the possibility of um, whether this city that is growing out there in Istanbul is sustainable Dem as, as a democracy, whether those, um, those um, uh, uh, urban growths that, uh, that we have witnessed happening in, in the city in the last few years can sustain a democratic practice, and what does this mean for uh, architecture, for design, uh, for things that perhaps have to do more with, uh, with uh, getting close to the making of, uh, of these objects. Um, so some of these uh, photographs were, were sent to me uh, actually by Omer, uh, who kindly sent me some examples of uh, what is happening around uh, Istanbul. Let me see if I can find out how to do this. So this, this is how the city is uh, growing. And, and the question, which uh, is a question that very rightly Saskia Sassen put, um, I remember, in the first session of uh, Urban Age, are these uh, things urbanizations, or, or do they have a certain level of cityness, as, uh, as she called it? Are these, uh, uh, this is actually not Istanbul, but it could be. Maybe it's a little bit more dense, it's uh, Korea. This uh, type of city is growing everywhere. And, and I think the question that uh, Saskia was putting forward is, are these uh, structures um, structures that will, would sustain a democratic uh, practice, a, a democratic life, or on the contrary, they are just machines to accumulate population and engage this population in uh, this kind of uh, capitalist uh, uh, machine. So, <clears throat> uh, at the same time, we, we, have to, we have to admit that these things, uh, and, and this is one of the reasons why I'm interested in, in them, uh, are... Uh, making available uh, to a larger, increasingly larger population the, the most, uh, the, the, the possibly the, the most uh, desired uh, good that we can provide, which is the access to the life in the city. We've seen during these uh, uh, past uh, uh, sessions how uh, people in the city are wealthier than people in, in, in other areas, and therefore it is very important that we are able to uh, grow the city. The question is uh, when we grow it or once we grow it, can we actually uh, make it sustainable as a, as a, <clears throat> as a community uh, uh, location uh, where uh, decisions are made in a more or less uh, democratic uh, manner. Uh, so um, why, why, why cheapness? Why, why cheapness? Let me first uh, go into the reason why I, I choose the argument for the, for the talk. <clears throat> All, the, the reason why Istanbul is growing so fast, or one of the reasons, as many uh, of these other uh, cities, is because it's still cheap. It has a large market. Uh, and like uh, most of these other emerging uh, economies, uh, is, uh, is, a bis is a place for, for people to invest, to make, uh, to make um, uh, business. And I think it is likely that this will be the way in which Istanbul will keep growing for the, for the next uh, few years. So it's worth thinking what are the, what are the aesthetic, uh, what are the architectural implications that this type of development may, um, may uh, trigger. <clears throat> what can we do as architects to ensure that democracy, uh, if not if not uh, um, uh, enabled, because probably that exceeds the, 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 the uh, expertise of architects and the, and the capacity of architects, it is communicated, presented as an, as an experience in this new <coughs> urban uh, landscape. So now, now that, that we inhabit uh, the, the um, hangover of um, uh, late capitalism and uh, globalization, I, I thought it was worth 
reflecting <coughs> on the opportunity that uh, up, uh, is opening before us uh, to regain a certain level of political agency uh, for material uh, practices, uh, to stop perhaps being subservient uh, to political discourses now that ideology is losing currency and there is a massive uh, drift to uh, swing voters uh, world, worldwide. If, if we look at the discourses that um, shaped the current uh, notions of democracy in the last, uh, in the last, uh, sec in the second half of the of the 20th century, uh, and this is not a kind of exhaustive list of uh, of uh, visionaries, but uh, there are some of these visionaries. So the the the, the main theme that you see across these uh, <coughs> these visions is uh, equality, equalization. Now. After these guys, uh, we have now these other guys. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so, I mean, starting from uh, Alan uh, Greenspan, who basically made av available cheap money uh, to Stelio Sagi Ioano, um, uh, who made available uh, cheap uh, flights, we see uh, a shift from a kind of ideological performance to um, uh, another type of performance made by a, a number of agents that are uh, no longer occupying political and elected offices but are operating from a business, uh, a business uh, perspective and, and producing things that are cheap and therefore, I mean, cheapness in the sense uh, is a kind of surrogate for democratic in, uh, in the market uh, economy. And that's uh, also the reason why I thought that cheapness was, uh, was an interesting uh, uh, thing to, um, uh, to look into because I think if we were able to understand, because I, I don't think these people, uh, I mean, these, these people have, uh, even if they are not operating from a political office, they have an enormous effect uh, in the politics of the contemporary city. Uh, and so if we were able to understand how do they operate, how do they uh, produce uh, goods, uh, uh, and what are the politics behind this uh, type of operation, probably we would be, we would be in, a, in a better position to uh, uh, put ourselves in a, in a more, to basically re-empower uh, the discipline <coughs> uh, and material practices as, a, as, a, as, a, as an activity. <coughs> so from, from the practices of these guys, I, I was most attracted to those that uh, were, that are more related or that affect more directly to the construction of uh, social body, that is uh, cheap uh, uh, clothing manufacturing and cheap uh, flights. Uh, those are products that in a way shape uh, the way the, the social body is, uh, is organized. And when we see, uh, I mean, the, I did this diagram to, to, to show, I mean, it was a kind of uh, also metaphor for, for architecture. Architects are still educated and, and trying to operate in the kind of higher uh, level uh, of the visionaries, the people who are supposed to put forward a new vision of the, of the world, where I believe that the most effective uh, uh, political uh, actions are happening on the other side, on the, on the kind of low-cost uh, side, which is what uh, everybody uh, uh, wears. <coughs> uh, let me see if I can. And, and, and the same thing happens with... Uh, with uh, airlines, uh, uh, so there are the kind of uh, glamorous uh, TWA who doesn't ex which doesn't exist anymore, Air France, uh, British Airways, and there are the the, the kind of low cost, no frills uh, airlines, <coughs> uh, which I I think is uh, is interesting because those airlines have managed, for example, to uh, the class. Uh, the, air, the, the aircraft uh, cabin. So classes have been abolished uh, and therefore uh, there are certain potentials that make me think hopefully about all these developments that are happening around uh, Istanbul even if, uh, if uh, customers are treated like uh, uh, livestock. And, 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 and actually uh, thinking about, uh, about um, EasyJet, I, <coughs> I remember the, 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 the discourse of um, or Giorgio, Giorgio Agamben and, and his um, description of what he calls bare life as a kind of status of diminished uh, citizenship where citizens have been deprived of, uh, of uh, rights uh, by uh, 
uh, a state of uh, exception, and yet uh, that uh, situation of bare life is uh, uh, maybe, in Agamben's word, uh, words, uh, a potential for resistance, a potential for uh, political, uh, <coughs> political uh, action. Uh, so this uh, Homo uh, sat Sacker, uh, which is uh, or Sacher, which is uh, the, the the way he refers to a kind of uh, old legal uh, figure, uh, can be actually a, a way of utilizing cheapness uh, uh, in order to uh, produce certain uh, new uh, political effects, uh, uh, which perhaps can be enacted in all these uh, peripheral uh, developments. So. Politicians have immediately uh, capitalized on, on this, and now we know uh, David Cameron uh, uh, pro proposing the EC Council, uh, and likewise uh, Ryanair is using the political discourse uh, as a way of uh, advertising. So there is a kind of fluid relationship between, uh, between uh, these uh, two uh, worlds of uh, producing cheap goods and uh, making uh, uh, politics and, and thinking further on on this um, on what may be the aesthetic um, potentials or the aesthetic consequences of uh, this no frills uh, production uh, uh, I, I thought that the, the, the kind of the lingo of uh, the low cost airlines the, the idea of the frills uh, could perhaps give us a handle on how to address the, the aesthetic potentials of um, of uh, this uh, cheapness uh, uh, strategies. So frills are epithelial excrescences that uh, are contingent, that are not structural, uh, that are uh, there in order to seduce or to produce a certain uh, sensual um, uh, effect. Uh, and I thought that they, the word uh, gives us a, a very interesting uh, entry into uh, perhaps uh, the aesthetics of uh, uh, low cost. And, and so I, I try to think about um, uh, the, the history of uh, frills in, in architecture uh, and found out that uh, modernism uh, policed frills out of uh, architecture as being superfluous, regressive, and ineffective on the grounds of economy, uh, on, a, on the grounds of, uh, of, course, of costs, uh, not on the grounds of style, because no style in modernism became <coughs> style. Uh, and that produced uh, uh, already some, uh, some problems. Uh, for example, Ms. van der Rohe deciding uh, to make uh, the Seagram in bronze because the client asked him to make it more expensive uh, uh, looking. Uh, so postmodernists uh, came in and, and uh, kind of uh, redeemed uh, frills uh, on the grounds that even if, if their use value um, is uh, negligible, uh, uh, their exchange value offers a surplus in respect to their uh, production costs and, and therefore in the late capitalist economy um, uh, style becomes a, a free floating uh, commodity without any attachment to structural values. Uh, so frills are an economically legitimate uh, uh, practice. So, uh, 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 so it, it, this gives us, it puts us now uh, after this kind of brief uh, history of uh, frills in, in architecture into a uh, a situation where we have uh, to choose uh, certain options uh, 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 in order to operate or to exploit uh, aesthetically um, uh, this, uh, this idea of frills or no frills. Uh, one of them will be cheap frills, and this is something that we can identify, for example, with uh, manufacturers like uh, Sara, uh, where uh, where the idea is not to remove the frills, but on the contrary, being be able to uh, produce them at a lower cost by tampering with the, uh, uh, with the kind of uh, procurement uh, of these uh, uh, clothes, etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, uh, these, of course, these frills are, uh, are heavily um, structured and grounded on a, on a very uh, powerful infrastructure. This is the, the, the logistics depot of uh, SARA in, uh, in Coruña, which is one of the largest uh, in the world, uh, and uh, uh, there is a number of uh, architects uh, that have been practicing frills on a, on a kind of uh, a cheap level. Uh, probably the most important one is uh, Frank Gehry, who from a very early uh, stage uh, was uh, interested in cheapness, um, and uh, a proof of that 
is his own very own uh, house, and that out of uh, that interest in early interest in cheapness <coughs> developed uh, something for uh, so something a little bit more um, uh, uh, expensive, um, which which basically um, uh, what 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 Gary does always is to detach the the rain screen from the waterproofing, and and so therefore the structure, the enclosure of the of the building is detached from the expression of the building. And by accepting that contradiction and that uh, lack of integrity of the product, he's able to deliver things that uh, are quite astonishing um, at uh, relatively modest uh, uh, prices. You see here the, the, the two uh, layers of uh, structure and, and that kind of contradiction that is embedded into the, into the detail of the, of the building. The other option is what I call the no frills, uh, no frills uh, cool, uh, in which uh, the no frills, uh, uh, the, the removal of uh, the frills, the kind of going, going back uh, to, to modernism, but, but not as no style, becoming style, but as a new uh, cool uh, style, uh, in which uh, cheapness becomes the origin of this, uh, uh, of this new, new style. New, new aesthetic uh, of, the, of the cheap emerges from a careful consideration of how to eliminate excess, the exceptional, the precious, the overpriced, and the exclusive. A certain acceptance of the generic is, in a way, embedded into this uh, uh, possibility. Uh, Muji, for example, will be uh, an example of uh, this uh, approach uh, to uh, design, <coughs> uh, which uh, this, this is not Muji, this is a, a Japanese fabricator that uh, is called Final home that makes clothes almost for uh, homeless uh, life, where you can fill the garments with uh, newspapers. Uh, so it's a kind of uh, new Roussonian inhabitation of the, of the city that I think is very much part of this aesthetic of the bare life. I mean, that, that uh, goes back to that uh, uh, proposal from uh, Agamben. Uh, Rem Kulhas is also uh, uh, an early... Uh, um, um, uh, pioneer in uh, cheapness uh, with the famous motto of uh, no money, no, no detail, and uh, maybe the, the use of um, uh, low-grade concrete systematically to produce a certain aesthetics in, uh, in Lille. Uh, so, I mean, I think I'm running out of time. I had uh, some... Uh, but let, let me show you some, uh, one more example of, uh, of this. This is uh, Palais du Tokyo from uh, Lagaton Vassal. Uh, who uh, are uh, architects uh, that uh, explore uh, extremely interestingly the, the possibilities of, uh, of uh, recycling, for example, a building, stripping it bare, uh, uh, introducing, uh, I mean, this is how these buildings uh, look like, uh, clearly uh, trying to make a new style out of... Um, <coughs> out of uh, 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 cheap materials, industrial uh, materials, um, introducing nature. Nature, again, with this kind of new neo-Russonian uh, uh, approach uh, of the no-frills uh, cool uh, is uh, something that, uh, that is, again, uh, uh, fashionable. Uh, and uh, I, I, was, I, I actually had a few examples that I'm not going to ha have time to explain of our own uh, uh, work, but, but maybe, maybe what I, I would like to, to end up by going back to the issue of uh, sustainability and saying that, that what is interesting uh, about the, the, the problem that is posed upon us, uh, architects, uh, when uh, having to address this issue of, of sustainability is the possibility of using it. Um, and sustainability, again, goes back to this idea of nature, the, the, the kind of... Uh, uh, readdressing of uh, nature or incorporation of uh, nature into into architecture. <coughs> uh, so there is there is a possibility of going back to this no frills. Uh, um, uh, now that we are uh, trying to incorporate all these technologies of uh, sustainability uh, as a kind of new aesthetic of explicitation. This is a kind of Sloterdijk uh, term that uh, uh, that uh, implies that that perhaps this economy, this, uh, this cheapness, this, uh, uh, that, that sustainability is going to force upon us uh, can be uh, used, uh, and rather than using all these uh, leads, uh, lead um, uh, labeling uh, afterwards uh, uh, as a way of justifying certain architectural 
uh, the decisions. Uh, I think the, 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 the great potential that these technologies have uh, for us is precisely to make expressive, expressive from the beginning of the, <coughs> of the uh, project uh, these new uh, economies that are going to be imposed upon us in the uh, very uh, near future. That's where I believe the, the territories uh, to be explored uh, lie ahead of us. Thank you very much.